everyone. Uh, let's start with a quick show of hands. Who here has maintained or contributed to open source software? Awesome. And who here has watched or done a live stream before? Wow, looks like I'm in the right room then. So, hello everyone again. I'm uh, Zafar Jesur, and I'm here today because I'm building a live streaming platform for developers. It's fully open source, and it's written in Elixir. And at its core, it is using Membrane, which is the multimedia pipeline framework developed by Mateusz and the awesome guys here at Membrane um, Software Mention. Thank you guys for your work. So today, I'm going to cover three things. One, how we built this platform. Two, who is already using it. And three, what are the plans for the future? And you are the people I'm building this for. This is a live streaming platform for developers. So please let me know if you have any feedback or thoughts. And now let's start with a quick demo of the platform. If we go to algora.tv, this is how the homepage looks like. We have the most recent live stream displayed on the right and then all the streamers streaming on Algora TV. And you might recognize some of these names, like Andras Bagtai. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. The creator of Coolify.io, or Daniel Rowe, the maintainer of Nux.js, and many others. And if we open this live stream in a separate window, we can see our chat on the right. And then we also have a watching now counter and all of these real-time components are powered by Phoenix framework of Elixir. And one of our major features is multi-streaming. So when you broadcast your stream to us, we can take that stream and then send it over to any of the platforms you want to stream into. And we support YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and any platform that supports RTMP, really. Um, we have a documentation here that has everything you need to get started with streaming with Algora. And if you're looking to contribute, like I said, we are fully open source. You can go to our repo and we have instructions to getting started and a couple architecture diagrams as well. And we even have some open bounties and more on this later. So, uh, we started Algorit TV, building Algorit TV uh, this earlier this year, around March. And yeah, the idea was to build a, an open source Twitch alternative, in a way, for specifically designed for developers. And we are a very small team of just two people, my co-founder and me. And I am the only developer in the team, so <laughs> yeah, so we really needed a language and a framework that makes it very easy to build this thing and then also to maintain it easily in the future. And so Elixir was the easy choice for this because it can handle anything from real-time web apps to media mm -hmm. pipelines and distributed systems, orchestration, and even machine learning. So, yeah, and it allows you to do more with less and be very productive because we have frameworks like Phoenix Live View, Membrane Framework, of course, Beam Clustering, OTP, and NX. All of these libraries and concepts make it very easy to build a large scale application without a huge team. So, while Elixir is the backbone of our project, Membrane Framework is the engine that makes it possible. Um, so Membrane is an incredible piece of software um, that allows you to build a media server very easily, and it allows you to stream via WebRTC, RTMP, HLS, and other protocols. It can transcode, mix, and apply custom processing. 
It can even record to MP4 and other containers, and it can handle dynamically connecting streams and much more. And usually it feels like building railway tracks with Lego bricks. So you just snap the pieces together and then some magic happens. So it's pretty fun. All right, so here's a quick membrane 101. You have elements, um, the data goes in, it gets transformed, and then it goes out. And the three main types of elements are source, which is where the data comes in, and then we have filter, which is where it gets transformed, and we have sync, which is where it goes out of the pipeline. And like Matteo showed us earlier, uh, we also have bins, which are containers for these elements that need to work together, or you want them to work together for some reason. So these are like mini pipelines inside your bigger pipeline, and you can nest them, but I don't know if that's a great idea. So in practice, this is what a basic streaming pipeline would look like. So we have an RTMP source bin that receives some RTMP packets from a TCP server. And then it demuxes that into audio and video and then hands it off to the sync bin. And then the sync bin um, chunks these streams into segments and then finally writing that to disk in a, on a server. And this is how it would look like in code. So you have a TCP server and then you have your source bin and your sync bin. And then you have the connections between the two, one for each channel, so video and audio. And this is really it for building a basic streaming pipeline in Membrane. Now, of course, when you deploy this on a server in the US, let's say, you, we immediately notice a lot of problems because we're writing these files and segments to disk, and that means that we're serving these files in from the US to all around the world, and that means high latency for users, no redundancy, no failover, and no caching. And to fix this problem with minimal headaches, we decided to use Tigris, which is an object storage that is globally distributed. So out of the box, it handles things like replication, global distribution, and caching. So you don't have to worry about any of, the, any of those. So that was nice. So took care of the last mile for us. But um, there is no object storage module in Membrane. But luckily, it is super easy to implement this interface um, provided by Membrane to make it all work. And this is the entire code in one slide again to integrate Tigris into Algora. Now moving forward, we again have the same problem on the first mile because now streamers all around the world are broadcasting to a single server. So we need to address that as well because again, we have high latency and no failover. And for that, we have deployed multiple servers on fly.io. And what's nice is about fly is that it's using Firecracker micro VMs. So these are very um, fast to boot up. And they also have a router that takes these incoming connections and then routes them to the nearest server that you have deployed, which is pretty nice. And then finally, their built-in WireGuard tunnels allows you to cluster your Elixir app with uh, no, almost no setup. So you get that for free as well. So let's recap what we have so far. We have a... TCP server, or multiple TCP servers rather, deployed globally, and then we have streamers broadcasting to the nearest one, and then those streams go into membrane pipelines, and finally, they are written into the object storage and served to the user from the nearest cache. As for multi-streaming, um, Again, we add a membrane element in the middle of our pipeline. This time it's called T. And this basically takes your stream and then clones it so that you can pass it to other syncs, multiple syncs. And so here we have the T um, 
splitting our stream into master and copy, and then the master goes into the object storage as before, and then the copy one goes to whatever platform the user wants to broadcast into. And you can add these dynamically as needed as the stream is moving along, so very nice. And then again, this is how it would look like in code. You have a membrane RTMP sync child, and then you just make sure to connect your T audio and T video, and it all works just magically. Now, all, this, all of this is nice and well, but we have a pretty big issue right now, which is that we're using HLS. And when you try to interact with chats in HLS, they are delayed by 15 to 20 seconds. And you can see some of these interactions from our chat. People are usually struggling. <laughs> and this happens because uh, mainly in HLS, um, the video player needs to buffer or load at least uh, three segments before it can start playback to ensure smooth playback. And in addition to that, there is some time lost in encoding and delivery of the segments. So all in all, if you're using something like six second segments, this adds up to 18 seconds from the three segments and then you have the, I don't know, some, some more seconds lost in the transition. And to get around that, we have implemented low latency HLS, which is an Apple protocol. Um, and the way it works is that the segments are broken down further into chunks of much smaller size. And this allows the video player to load these chunks into the buffer much more efficiently. And in addition, LLHLS allows you to provide preload hints to the client so that the client can, in advance, ask for some resources. And then the server blocks or holds on to these requests in the meantime and delivering them as soon as they become available. And to make this work, we have added a low latency controller in our pipeline. And except for segments, everything else is now rooted through the LL controller to the user. And these are things like partial segments, manifests, and delta manifests. And this controller is directly responsible for caching these things, distributing them to other nodes, and serving them to the user, as well as providing preload hints and stuff like that. But the, unfortunately, this damn thing didn't work on iOS. So we had to roll it back for the time being. And if anyone here has found a solution for this, please find me after the call, after the talk, and we can chat. Oh, and we even have an open bounty for this. Um, so basically, anyone can submit a PR here. And if it's merged, you get paid in a few days. And this is powered by Algora.io, our previous, or rather the main product that we have developed since last year. Algora TV, on the other hand, has been only developed by, uh, since March of this year. And yeah, basically we had more than a quarter of a million distributed to 480 contributors almost, all around the world. And on the activity feed, you can see the, the bounties being shared and people live streaming all in one place. And the projects using Algora. That being said, though, bounties are not the only way to earn money on Algora. We recently have introduced live stream billboards, live billboards or also known as in-video ads. I can show you how these look like. I don't know if I have sound. Watch hours. So this is Algora. Uh, this sorry is about that. I earned three pounds, three pounds over the last month. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think I've made a single dime off of uh, YouTube yet, but we're at 3,700 watch hours. So this is Algora. This is actually the, the platform that I'm using to stream. Um, and it's going out to Twitch and YouTube and so on. Um, but one of the things that they offer is this ad. Ooh, buddy. Good companies like Anki and others. So yeah, these are basically in video ads that pop up during the stream. And then they stay there for a couple minutes and then they fade off. And we're doing this with the goal of helping developers earn from live streaming, but also give dev tool companies a new channel so that um, they can reach new audiences and also showcase their products in live streams. And to give them a sense of how these are, uh, these are performing, we also built an ad analytics dashboard for these ads. So you can, here you can see our own analytics page. And we're tracking metrics like views, airtime of the ads, and number of streams and number of creators separately for each platform. And also uh, filtered by languages as well. And then down here at the below, you can replay the exact moments your ads were shown. And we started building this in the last month. And we did a, our pilot program this month, basically. And now we're trying to scale this up so that we can make live streaming more sustainable for developers. Yeah, here is the repo. And yeah, thank you for listening. Boris has a question in the back over there. So with uh, the low latency um, version, how low can you get the latency? So we did some uh, measurements like ourselves, um, and we found it around two at the minimum, and it was like three at most. So it was between two and three very consistently. Thank you. And right now, without LLHLS, it's usually around 15 to 20 seconds. Any other questions? Done, in the front. The mic is coming. Um, so globally distributing files for HLS or LLHLS, um, how are you planning on kind of dealing with, like, so if you add, say, web output for WebRTC to get it even down further, how are you planning on kind of dealing with distributed stuff for, for that um, and not just relying on, you know, distributed files? Because um, obviously real-time media is very different to HLS and Dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And to be honest with you, I haven't worked with WebRTC before, but we are planning on adding WIP and WEP um, in the near future. Um, I mean, because we have a cluster of Elixir nodes, I think we'll be able to like build a mesh network of sorts so that we can distribute those files directly ourselves. And one nice thing about Elixir is that you can just RPC into any, any, any other node that you want to communicate with. So, yeah. We have a question from the chat. Michal asked, do you have any plans to monetize the project? Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as, as for monetization, thanks for the question. Um, our first 
plan is to sell these ads to dev tool companies so that we can give them airtime and then also pay out to creators. And then for later, we might have other options as well. All right. Does anyone have any other questions? Oh. I understand. Can you hear me? Yes. I want to understand the persona or the motivation why you decided to build a platform specifically for developers. Maybe I'm asking it because I'm a PM, uh, so I want to understand better what motivates you to make something distinct for developers. Why not other personas, which might make your market potentially larger, more users, more money? Okay, I will stop here, but uh, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, two reasons I would give is that one, our other bounties platform is also for developers at the moment. So if we keep the the target audience the same, like there's I feel like there's more synergies in between the two products so that they can build on top of each other in a way. And the second point is that I feel like developer live streams are one of the not just developer live streams, but developer content on YouTube, like VODs and stuff, are usually a grind to like turn it into a sustainable like hustle. And we think that there is a huge value added by those content and they should be able to made um, like monetize accordingly. Did that answer your question? Sure, but I was curious also, maybe for the future, you can think of other audiences or other, you know, personas as well, which might be interested in customized streaming solutions, which can maybe help you scale better. But that's probably something for the future to consider. Yeah, probably. And I mean, like, I don't know if we're going to stay for developers forever. We will probably like concentrically build, you know, related Maybe it could be like designers or it could be something close to developers at first. And then, I don't know, maybe build on top of that over time. Oh, another point, I guess, with keeping it specific is that we can, like the ads become more meaningful because they are already like targeted at the content. And we don't need to do like any tracking based on user and individuals. We can just target the ads to the content. And like with that, because the ads are embedded in video, like there's no client side tracking also, which I think the developed crowd appreciates. I, I have uh, one more question out of, out of curiosity. Do you have on top of your mind any matrices how the adoption of the platform uh, is growing over time? We do have a star history. Something <laughs> happened, clearly. <laughs> so earlier this month, I just posted about our Elixir bounties on Reddit. And then... <laughs> Someone saw that post and then posted on Hacker News. And from in one day, we went from like 150 to 500 or 600, which was pretty insane. It was a lot of traffic that day. Cool. All right, unless there are any further questions, I think that this is a wrap for today. Thank you, Zaf, for your talk. <laughs>